having you here in Germany, I would like to start the interview uh, asking you what do you think about the tremendous support of the German government and the German state and the German economy uh, towards the state of Israel? Um, well, the first point to make is that there is a huge chasm between the position of the government and judging by public opinion polls the feelings of the German people. I think of all the European countries, uh, here I'm referring to Western and Central Europe, of all the European countries, the most hostile public opinion regarding Israel, the most regard hostile public opinion, uh, is found in Germany. Now, one, they want to claim that that's because Germans are anti-Semitic, but that's not my opinion. My opinion is that whatever one thinks of uh, Germany on other levels, on an ethical level, uh, Germans, in particular German young people, are by far the most morally serious of any Europeans. There's actually no comparison. Uh, when you speak to a German about war, about moral issues, they're very serious. They pay the terrible price for the lunacy of the Third Reich. And I think it can be said of the German people that they learned the right lessons from World War II. So, the policies of the successive German governments uh, are mostly the result of blackmail by Israel, playing the Holocaust card, threatening them with claims of anti-Semitism, to which the government feels very vulnerable. Um, I doubt anyone in a German government in the privacy of their homes or the privacy of their offices, assuming the U.S. is not bugging their offices, if you were to listen in, they do not believe a word they say publicly about Israel. But Israel has managed to um, make German officials wary of um, criticizing Israel. The only exception to that is actually your Chancellor, Angela Merkel, who really believes that she's the only one in Germany who remembers the Holocaust. She, she's slightly, you know, she's uh, lives in a delusional world. But with the exception of Merkel, who grew up in East Germany and, as I said, isn't aware that Germans have gone through the phase of atoning for the Holocaust. And she thinks she's the only one who really cares about what happened. With the exception of her, I don't think the Germans believe a word they're saying, the officials. Germany delivers arms, submarines, yeah, right. and, and so on. I mean, and, and at the same time, Israel is violating the international law. So w would you agree uh, a call for stopping weapon delivery to Israel? Amnesty International has called for an arms embargo. Human Rights Watch has called for an arms embargo. All the major human rights organizations have called for that. And they tend to be pretty moderate, even conservative. So if they call for the arms embargo, of course they call for it. Israel 
shouldn't be receiving a single weapon until it <coughs> carries out its obligations under international law, which means, number one, ending the blockade of Gaza, and number two, ending the occupation. The German Federal Republic has 16 states. Berlin is one of them. Mm -hmm. And all these 16 states support uh, a forest project by the, by the Jewish National Fund in the Negev Desert. Mm -hmm. And uh, Palestinian Bedouins are uh, yeah, evicted and deported so where these forests uh, grow. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about this uh, forest project? No. I'm not aware of it. But uh, I, I think it, it's, it's not a good thing to, to support a forest project when the indigenous population had had to leave and is treated in a very bad way at, at this place. Mm -hmm. And uh, Germany has so far grown 500,000 trees. 500,000 trees, that, that's, that's a large number. At, at a place where Palestine Bedouin had lived before. Okay, but because you did not hear about that, I cannot ask you about this. Yeah, I but, but but I, I would like to repeat my question that I asked yesterday evening. What is the potential of the BDS movement? Um, in my opinion, its potential has been exaggerated. Uh, it plays a useful role in publicizing the issue and keeping the cause of Palestine alive, and that's very important. It provides direction and goals for young people who want to do more than just organize lectures. And I understand that, and I think that's a useful thing to do. But there are two aspects of BDS which I consider problematic. Aspect number one, as you've said a number of times already in our conversation, uh, the principle for ending the conflict has to be international law. And Israel is a state under international law. You can't ignore that fact and you can't evade that fact. But the BDS program attempts or pretends that it doesn't have to address that issue. But it has to address that issue, because that's part of the law. Just as Palestinians have rights under the law, so do Israelis have rights under the law. Uh, so at that level of uh, st strategic level, I don't think BDS can possibly reach a mainstream audience until it shows itself to be consistent in its application of international law. And secondly, BDS is a tactic by supporters abroad of the Palestinians. But we can't liberate Palestine. That's the job of the people themselves. We can help, and in fact we may even be able to play a critical role, but we can't play the principal role. And BDS creates the illusion that it can liberate Palestine. A couple of weeks ago the main spokesperson for BDS, Omar Barghouti, he wrote an article in which he said, and I'm quoting him now, Israel is facing imminent collapse. That's just, that's not even the moon. That's another solar system. Even uh, Israel has a strong economy and is receiving guests of huge corporations inside the country, from Australia, from, from China, from, 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 from everywhere. everywhere. From India. Canada, from Canada, yes. 
from from even from yes, yeah. South Korea, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of business with the Japan and South Korea, mm -hmm. yeah, and they do not care at all about Palestine. Yeah, they just care about business. Yes, exactly, capital. So <clears throat> this notion that Israel is facing imminent collapse—it's just fantasy. What 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 about the? internal pressure maybe the knifing what do you think about the knifing the, this I, controversial I think, issue I, I think at this point israel likes the knifings or netanyahu likes them because they create that siege mentality that hysteria the need for a quote unquote strong leader which is what uh, israel likes so at this point, the knifings are actually a good thing, and it's improbable that they're going to cross a threshold and become a real threat to Israel. Uh, knifings is not a strategy. It's an act of despair. Would you think that organized resistance, so in the sense of military organized resistance, would be more helpful? No. Uh, I'm not a pacifist, uh, and even pacifists aren't categorically against violence. Gandhi was a pacifist, but he wasn't against violence in all circumstances. Uh, I'm not a pacifist, but I'm a political realist. Some strategies work in some places, and they don't work in other places. I don't think nonviolence could have worked in South Lebanon, and I don't think nonviolence can work in a uh, forest in central India, because nobody knows what's going on, nobody cares what's going on, so the Indian government or Israel in South Lebanon, they just can go in and wipe everybody out and nobody cares, there are no cameras there. But for nonviolence to work, it has to be um, very prominently on the radar of the international community. And then there are possibilities for it to work. So I think it can work in the West Bank and Gaza because those are uh, more than blips on the radar screen. They're very prominent on the international agenda. Uh, whereas military force has no prospects, that's all another fantasy. That's the Hamas fantasy, unfortunately encouraged by a very smart person, Sheikh Nasrallah, Sayyid Nasrallah uh, from Hezbollah. He encourages something which I think is not, he gives bad advice. He keeps telling them to use armed resistance, which I think is poor advice. So liberation and c cannot be a product of internal activities like no, BDS, it must be a product of in internal It can't be external, resistance. it has mm -hmm. to be, and fundamentally it has to be internal. Mm -hmm. We can play a critical role mm -hmm. uh, assisting, but we can't do it on our own. This time you were allowed to, to talk in Germany, but I, I remember at, at least one occasion where they did not allow you to talk. Can uh, several you remember times, that? yeah, the can, Rosa can, can Luxemburg. You, can you, yeah, can you I talk don't remember about the details. Look, Germany is a crazy place when it comes to the Holocaust. <laughs> They're always trying to prove how um, sorry they are. It's all a theater. But the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation is left. Uh, the, left left, the left here is not a normal left, unfortunately. It's not a truly anti-colonial. It's not truly anti-colonial if they, because they also support Israel and the colonialism mm -hmm. and the territories that are occupied. It's the guilt. It's the guilt. I can understand the guilt, but I have little patience with it at this point. It's 70 years ago, the people who passed through it are dead. I'm already heading towards death, and I'm a child of survivors. So, all right, let's stop already. And let's just try to make the world a better place. 
and not perform these roles in the theater about the Holocaust. Thank you for the interview and have a safe journey. Well, thank you so much. Are we here already? Yeah, we're very close. <laughs> oh yeah, Berlin, Tega. Where are you flying to? New York. New York. Mm -hmm. Where, where do you live in New York? Uh, I don't live in the heart of New York. I live in there, uh, Coney Island in Brooklyn. It's far away. Where are you from? I'm from Turkey. Oh, I was. I taught in Turkey last year. Okay. In Sakarya. Sakarya. Okay. Yeah. How long are you here? Twenty-eight years. Oh, so you're t you're German already. You don't even look 28 years old. How old are you? Repeat. How old are you? I'm 29. Oh, so you've been here 28 years. Do you have uh, children? No, I'm not married. I don't have a job. I've been unemployed for 10 years. Life didn't turn out the way I would have liked, but that's okay. But you reach a lot of people with your books and you spread a lot of useful information. I try. I do my best. When did you travel to uh, Israel for the last time? Um, I've never really been to Israel. I mm. passed through it, but I've never spent any time there. I, um, so I, I just go there to go to the occupied ter territories. And so what's your, your main source of information? Websites? Blogs? No. Books and documents. Books and documents. Very little, uh, very little with the web.